In extension two volumes, right? We've essentially looked at these two ideas. That's pretty much it, right? We know how to do volumes that are just around a coordinate axis, but if you dig a little deeper, if you say, okay, well, let's actually think about what's going on, think about different kinds of slices, think about a different direction to cut up your volume, you get these different kinds of shapes, okay? Now, we're at that point where it's like, okay, well, I understand these two. When you encounter a question, the vast majority of them in the HSC course will sort of say, do this or that. The vast majority. Okay? However, not all of them do. And part of the skill they're looking for you to, to they're looking to assess you at is can you make a choice between which one is the best one? Right? Can you make a choice that will render the algebra and the calculus and all that kind of thing? The simplest. Right? Now I think what you'll find is that basically since you've got two choices, you've basically got two choices. This is a little bit like integration by parts. Remember integration by parts? Can you help me rehearse? What is the um, formula for integration by parts? U d v equals minus. Okay, very good. Right. So this is integration by parts, and of course, if I had some um, some actual boundaries like an a and a b, then the difference would be that's a to b, that's a to b, and good. You've got an actual definite integral in here <coughs> that can be evaluated. Okay. Now, really, what sort of makes integration by parts sort of move is which do you choose for u and dv. And you might recall when we were doing integration, you're like, oh, okay, sometimes it's obvious. That one should definitely be u. That one should definitely be dv. But sometimes it's not. And so you actually sometimes would have chosen one, had a look at what your um, matrix of different things were and said, oh, no, I don't want to go in this direction. So then you try the other one and out it pops out. So you will find a similar kind of thing with this. You look at a function and it might not be obvious to you. It might not be slap in the face. Oh yes, clearly do this by slices, okay? So you kind of have to see what happens, what kinds of integrals do you form, and therefore which direction should you go in. So the place we should start is by drawing a diagram. In fact, we're gonna draw two diagrams, one for slices, one for shells. So uh, all you need is your set back to here. Now, you'll notice I'm drawing this part of the axis, axes I should say, because, number one, I'm from not to pi on two, not to pi on two, so that gives me just a little bit of the y equals cos x curve, but I'm rotating around the y axis, that's this way, right? So therefore, I'm going to get something symmetrical about this axis. So that's why I've got sort of even components, even amounts of the negative and positive x axis. Right, so what does this shape look like? Well, when you go from 0 to pi on 2, can someone describe to me what y equals cos x is doing? Where does it start? At 1. Starts up here at 1. And then it just sort of comes down. And that's it. That's the shape. It's a simple shape, isn't it? Okay. Let's just quickly shade that in so we can demonstrate this is the area involved. And then you do the rotation required, which creates this opposing bit over here, which luckily for us is actually just what cos x normally looks like. And then you try and add some things to this to make it look a little more 3D because this is after all a solid of evolution. So we're getting something like this. Okay. So this is what I've got. Now, let's first think about slices. I'm just going in the order that we learnt them in. So slices cut up your volume in which direction? How do I cut? Axis of Perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Here is my axis of rotation. So if I were to pick out one of the slices, it might be based on an area like that. You see how this is perpendicular to my y-axis, which I'm rotating around? Okay. So if I looked at that bit and I said, okay, well, let's, let's draw off to the side. What's an example of one of these infinitesimally thin cylinders? Then I guess it's going to look something like this. Okay, what do you think? This is pretty straightforward. In fact, um, when you have a look at this, slices, because what you get is a, um, it's a complete slice, it's not even an annular slice, it's just a regular old cylindrical slice. This is not complicated at all, right? What's our um, thickness here of our slice? Uh, it's gonna be delta y, because it's a vertical distance. 
And then the only other thing you need to work out this because you don't even have an inner radius and an outer radius, do you? You just have <coughs> a radius. Okay. So what is this radius here? Okay. It's, 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 really -coordinate. it's just the x coordinate, isn't it? Because look, it's horizontal, clearly. Yeah. So the x coordinate, what is the x coordinate? Well, remembering that this is y equals cos x, okay, and noting the domain I'm in, which is a nice, pleasant domain, x is just going to be equal to cos inverse of y. Okay. So therefore, I should be able to say the volume is equal to the limit as delta y approaches zero. Where am I summing from and what am I summing? Which values? What kinds of variable am I interested in? They're y values, right? And the way you can know it is because this is in y's, this is in y's. So I'm going from naught up to 1, yes? And what's in here? What am I adding together? I'll just, I'll write x squared and I'll substitute it in the next line. Um, and then I've got delta y here. Do you agree with that? So that thing there is my pi r squared h. There's my cylinder, okay? So on my next line, I'm going to write the integral of this thing, okay? So I might as well take that pi out the front, so just the constant after all. And then what you're getting in here, like I said, this is not even an annulus, this is just a cylinder. So even a two unit student, they wouldn't be able to solve it, but they could at least write down what this integral is. It's from naught to one of <coughs> I've already taken that pi out, so that leaves me the cos inverse of x squared, uh, sorry, y rather, y, right, with respect to y, okay? Now, please no, please no. Now, I should point out, this, um, this integral is not insoluble. It, it can be done, and I will show you very, very briefly at the end. I won't actually work it out for you, but I will show you what happens if you choose to go down this path. But I think we all agree... We don't want to go down this path, okay? So this is like when you've done your integration by parts and you look at your UDV and you're like, uh-oh, this thing's going to be a pain, so you sort of steer away from it. Okay, I asked you, I don't know if you've got there yet, I asked you to draw two diagrams, so let's do another one. Let's do another one. Same area, same axis of rotation, but this time we're going to slice it up differently. 